Hello, Matt, to Jamir, and you're watching the I Hornbill TV's English News Bulletin. Now, headlines. With average testing of more than 18 lakh COVID samples per day in June, India has tested over 40 core samples across the country till Friday, informed the Indian Council of Medical Research. A motion has been tabled in the UK Parliament condemning the rise in anti-Indian racism in the country as found by a study conducted by the 1928 Institute, Navendu Mishra, a Labour Party MP, had tabled the early day motion in the House of Commons on Tuesday, June 22. Jammu and Kashmir PJP President Ravindra Raina on Saturday said that some leaders are still dreaming about the restoration of Article 370, which is next to impossible. He advised political parties to leave the chapter behind and take part in the assembly polls whenever they are held. Four villages, namely Long Samtang, Mualington, Kensa, Salulamang and the Mokokchung district have achieved 100% vaccination for all the eligible beneficiaries. With average testing of more than 18 lakh COVID samples per day in June, India has tested over 40 crore samples across the country till Friday, informed the Indian Council of Medical Research. As on June 1st, India had tested 35 crore COVID-19 samples. It reached 40 crore, 18 lakh, 11,892 samples across the country on June 24th. Professor Dr. Balram Bhagrava, the Director General of ICMR, said that this testing milestone is a testimony to the fact that India has been successful in implementing the strategy of 5T approach, trace, treat and use of technology efficiently which will enable the country to contain the spread of the pandemic. The total number of diagnostic laboratories in the country has reached 2,675, out of which dedicated government laboratories are 1,676 and private laboratories number stands at 999, the ICMR said. As many as 48,698 new COVID-19 cases, 64,818 recoveries and 1,183 Deaths were reported in the country in the last 24 hours, said the Union Health Ministry. The total number of positive cases now stands at 3 crore 1 lakh 83,143, including 2 crore 91 lakh 93,085 recoveries and 3 lakh 94,493 deaths. There are currently 5 lakhs 95,565 active cases in the country, 1.97% of the total caseload. Yesterday, they were 6,12,868. The recovery rate stands at 96.72%, while the dead rate is 1.31%. Four villages, namely Long Samtang, Mualenden, Kansa, Salulamang, and the Mokokchung district, have achieved 100% vaccination for all the eligible beneficiaries. More than 4,000 jabs were administered during the first and second special vaccination drive for both 18 years plus and 45 years plus in all the 18 wards of Mokokchung municipal area and the adjoining villages of Mokokchung and Chuchuyampang as per dashboard.covin.gov.in. Mokokchung district has recorded first dose 45,593 and second dose 4,835, accumulating a total of 50,428 vaccine doses administered till date. An official informed that approximately 50% of the eligible beneficiaries in the district have been vaccinated till date. Meanwhile, source informed that the Chief Medical Office Mokokchung will be launching a vaccination sensitization program in all the villages in the district by next week, followed by vaccination drive to achieve maximum vaccination in rural areas. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is chairing a review meeting on Saturday to discuss the progress of the COVID-19 vaccination drive across the country. As many as 31 crore 50 lakhs 45,926 doses of COVID-19 vaccines have been administered so far in what has been billed the world's largest vaccination drive, including 61 lakh 19,169 in the last 24 hours. 
India started the world's largest vaccination drive on January 16 this year in a phased manner, with the healthcare workers getting inculated first. The vaccination of frontline workers started on February 2. The next phase of COVID-19 vaccination commenced from March 1st for those over 60 years of age and for people aged 45 and above with specified comorbid conditions. India launched vaccination for all people aged more than 45 from April 1st. Phase 3 of the vaccination drive was started on May 1st for the beneficiaries belonging to the age group of 18 to 44. As many as 48,698 new COVID-19 cases, 64,818 recoveries and 1,183 deaths were reported in the country in the last 24 hours, the Union Health Ministry informed on Saturday. The total number of positive cases now stands at 3 crore, 1,83,143, including 2 crore 91,93,085 recoveries and 3,94,493 deaths. There are currently 5,95,565 active cases in the country, 1.97% of the total caseload. Yesterday, there were 6,12,868. The recovery rate stands at 96.72%, while the death rate is 1.31%. In the first case of the Delta Plus variant of COVID-19 coming to light from Rajasthan, a 65-year-old woman has tested positive with the new strain. She had recovered from COVID-19 in May and had also undergone both doses of vaccination. However, the woman is healthy, confirmed government officials. With this, Rajasthan became the ninth state in the country to register the new virus strain. According to Bikana's PBM Hospital, Superintendent Parmendra Shirohi, that the patient's samples was sent to NIV on May 31st and after 25 days, the state government received the reports, which were then sent to Bikana District Collector for further action. Bikana CMHOOP Jahar said that special instructions have been issued for tracing in and around the residence of the woman. All those people who tested positive in this area in last one month will be tested again, he added. This woman had already recovered from the COVID infection, Jahar said. Rajasthan government is taking this issue seriously. Chief Minister Ashok Gahlod said that there will be no laxity in services and the new guidelines will ensure that the Delta Plus variant does not spread across the state. Delta Plus variant has also been traced in Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Punjab, Jammu and Kashmir, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. The highest number of patients have been reported in Maharashtra with 21 cases. National Conference leader and former Jammu and Kashmir Chief Minister on Saturday said that political parties of the region had conveyed to Prime Minister Narendra Modi that if the polls are to be held then statehood should be restored first. Gulam Nabi Azad had spoken on behalf of all of them that they do not accept this timeline and do not accept delimitation, election, statehood, said Umar Abdullah. They want delimitation, statehood and then election and if the government wants to hold polls, it will have to restore statehood first, said Umar Abdullah. After Thursday's three-hour-long all-party meeting between Jammu and Kashmir leaders chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, opposition parties have demanded the restoration of statehood first, otherwise they won't fight elections. The National Conference leader said this is a demand of all the political parties in Jammu and Kashmir. A motion has been tabled in the UK Parliament condemning the rise in anti-Indian racism in the country as found by a study conducted by the 1928 Institute Navendu Mishra, a Labour Party MP, had tabled the early day motion in the House of Commons on Tuesday, June 22nd. The Indian Institute and organization set up to represent the views of British Indians recently released a report called British Indian Identity, Political Representation and Policy Priorities, stating that 80% of British Indians have faced prejudice because of their Indian identity with Hindu phobia being the most prevalent. Acknowledging this report and the contribution made by 1.3 million Indians in the UK, the EDM called on the key institutions to urgently address this type of prejudice. Talking to India today, Mishra said that the EDM is the first step in the trying to address that it is not a means to an end, rather a step to raise awareness among 
parliamentarians so that they properly understand both the contributions Indians have made to British society and the harm negative stereotyping can have. In the British Parliament, EDMs are used to put on record the views of individual MPs or to draw attention to specific events or campaigns. The number of signatures to a particular EDM signifies the parliamentary support for a particular cause or point of view. As of June 23, 14 MPs from across the parties have supported the EDM. Member of Parliament from South Hall and Ealing, Virendra Sharma is one of them. There has been a sharp escalating the violence in Afghanistan over the last few months, even as intra-Afghan talks continue and the United States prepares to pull out its troops completely in September. There remains a question mark on the Taliban's sincerity. This has heightened India's concerns for the region. Afghanistan's ambassador to India, Farid Mundiazia, speaking to CNN News 18, agreed that India has legitimate concerns in Afghanistan. There are over 20 terror organizations that the Taliban supports, with some that directly target India and Indian assets. The Taliban is now sitting at the negotiation table and India is trying to tap into its leadership in Doha. However, CNN News 18 has learned from sources that India is yet to make any significant headway in being able to talk to the head of the Taliban's political office Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar. And even as India awaits this opening for a conversation, Ambassador Mahmoud Zay said that the Afghanistan government has expectations from India of sending a clear message to the Taliban to let go of violence and preserve the gains of the last 20 years, particularly the democratic gains. He said that as the world's largest democracy, India has always stood for democratic values in Afghanistan and the government and people of Afghanistan expect New Delhi to continue supporting these principles. Kohima is ranked 10 out of the 100 smart cities and certified as enabled in the Data Maturity Assessment Framework 2.0. This was announced by the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs during the 6th anniversary celebration of Smart City Mission AMRUT and PMAY on the 25th of June. Kohima is the only smart city in Northeast to make it to the top 10 and shares the 10th position with two other cities, update stated. According to a statement that was received here on June 26, the Smart Cities Mission launched the Data Smart Cities Strategy in February 2019 as a roadmap for harnessing the potential of data to address complex urban challenges across 100 cities. To successfully implement this initiative, the Data Maturity Assessment Framework was also launched to encourage cities to strengthen their data infrastructure and facilitate them in assessing their readiness and maturity on data. The MAF cycle was Assessed based on the following five pillars policy, existence of robust policy mechanism in the city around data governance, empowerment, protection, collaboration, and innovation, people, presence of empowered city officials with the capacity to guide the development of city data policies, managed data governance, drive interdepartmental and interagency data exchange, and to build city data alliances. Process. Effectiveness of the city's processes around data collection, usage, management, security, privacy, empowerment, collaboration, and innovation. Technology. Quality and robustness of the city's information and communications technology infrastructure, including digital platforms, sensors, IoT devices, data exchanges, big data, and artificial intelligence. Outcomes. Quality of outcomes around data-driven governance, ease of living, ease of doing business, collaboration and innovation in the city, the update stated. Some of the initiatives undertaken by Kohima for this framework are preparation of the draft city data policy, dedicated open city data portal data, analysis on critical data sets in sectors such as water, air, mobility, disaster, etc., appointment of data coordinators in state departments and few civil society organizations, etc., one critical and notable aspect for Kohima regarding the process pillar is that most of the data are with individual departments, and therefore the forthcoming and willingness of departments to share data with Kohima Smart City is laudable and truly appreciated. The continued proactive participation of various departments and citizens will be necessary to make Kohima a truly connected data smart city. Former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin was sentenced on Friday to 22 half years in prison for the murder of George Floyd, whose dying cast under Chauvin's knee led to the biggest outcry against racial injustice in the U.S. in generations. 
the punishment, which came after Chauvin broke his year-long silence to offer condolences to the Floyd family and express hope that they eventually have some peace of mind is one of the longest prison terms ever imposed on a U.S. police officer in the killing of a black person. Still, Floyd family members and others were disappointed. The sentence fell short of the 30 years prosecutors had requested. And with good behavior, Chauvin, 45, could get out on a parole after serving two-thirds of his sentence, or about 15 years. Judge Peter Chahil went beyond the 12-and-a-half-year sentence prescribed under state guidelines, citing Chauvin's abuse of a position of a trust and authority and also the particular cruelty shown to Floyd. Floyd's family attorney, Ben Crum, said, the family had gotten some measure of accountability, but is hoping Chauvin gets a maximum at his upcoming federal civil rights trial. Trump said this was the longest sentence a police officer has ever received in Minnesota. Actor turned TMC MP Mimi Chakrabarti on Saturday fell ill a few days after she was administered a fake COVID-19 vaccine, sources said. The doctor who attended to the Jadwapur MP said it was too early to link her illness with the fake jab that she had taken four days ago, they said. Chakrabarti became seriously ill at her residence in the morning and her maid called a family physician, sources close to the renowned actor said. The actor, who has been suffering from gallbladder and liver-related problems, suffered from dehydration, stomach ache and her blood pressure count dipped, they said. Mimi Chakrabarti condition is now stable and she is under the treatment at her home and she is also suffering from hypertension, the sources said. The doctor who attended to her said her illness cannot be immediately linked to the fake vaccine as she already had a liver problem, the sources said. Chakrabarti, whose alertness led to the busting of a fake vaccine racket organized by a conman posing as a civic official in Kolkata was scheduled to undergo a test during the day to ascertain any possible adverse effect of the jab. In a video message on Thursday, she said she had asked people not to panic. As Israel reported a surge in COVID-19 cases, the authorities have reimposed an indoor mask requirement with a top health official warning the spread of the coronavirus was accelerating. The decision was made on Friday and people have been asked to wear masks both indoors and at mass gatherings outdoors. Citing Health Ministry, Times of Israel reported that the renewed mandate took effect at noon in all enclosed spaces except for permanent places of residence a day after the head of a team appointed to tackle coronavirus, Zar Najwan Ayash said it would be reinstated early next week amid a recent resurgence in cases. However, the mandate was lifted last week on June 15. According to a health ministry statement, those exempt from the requirement were children under seven, people with disabilities that prevent them from wearing a mask, anyone alone in an enclosed space, to workers who work regularly together in the same room, and anyone exercising. Times of India further reported that the ministry has directed Israelis to wear face masks at mass gatherings outdoors. It also urged those at risk groups or who are not vaccinated against COVID to avoid gatherings. That's all for tonight's English News Bulletin. To subscribe to our channel and also follow Hornbill TV Official on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube and Instagram. I'm Atu Jamir. Have a good evening.